Hey everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. You'll remember a couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I showed you how I took my favorite jerkbait, the fat belly, and I enlarged it to make a bigger jerkbait. And part of the process was photocopying it to a larger size, putting that on a piece of wood, cutting it out, shaping it, and then finally painting it. And in the very end, taking it out, fishing, and losing it. My quick clip failed. So, I made another one. And I have to say, I think this one came out even nicer. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I make a silicone mold for this, and then we'll actually cast a few out of this polyurethane casting resin. And I'll show you how I finalize my weight and balance for lures that I cast out of resin. This video should have a lot of tips for you lure makers. Stick around. So the first thing I want to do is make a box for this thing and that's going to act as a form for the actual mold and a frame for the clay bed that I'm going to use. And what I like to use is Lego blocks. It's just easy to do and all this stuff is reusable afterwards. But you can use any kind of material you have laying around, especially cheap disposable stuff like cardboard, thin foam packaging, anything that you can just hot glued onto a nice flat and smooth surface. So my recommendation is that you make the box as small as reasonably possible because the bigger the box, the more the waste, the more silicone you waste and the silicone really is the most expensive part of this whole process. You wanna make a box that's big enough so that you can do everything you need to do in there and that will include, of course, the lure, some alignment keys and I'll show you what those are in a while. A sprue which is essentially where you're going to pour the resin into and uh, some locations for vents. When I do it I like to angle my lure upwards in the direction of the pour I want to make. So if I want to pour my resin down into the head and have it run down into the body and the reason I'm doing that is because you have to take a look at the shape of the lure that you have and you don't want to pour where you'll have sort of an undercut, a place where maybe air will trap. This thing's relatively smooth and round, but it could still trap air down there. So I'm gonna pour it from the head down. It should pour down in here, and I should only have to vent one or two vents, maybe at the very nose and here near the top. And this first layer really needs to be about the thickness of the lure itself so you can get your clay down in there and embed this halfway down into the clay. If you're using silicone that's tin cure, you can use any, any clay you want to. This is just really inexpensive children's modeling clay, and I usually use that. But the silicone I have right now is a little fussy. So I'm using sulfur-free molding clay, and you can pick this stuff up at any art supply place or online. And I'm just gonna drop this in here and smooth it out, and then I'll show you how I embed the lure. All right, so I'm gonna align this the way I think is best, leaving enough space everywhere to make sure that there's enough structure in the mold so there's enough thickness on the walls uh, to support this whole thing once we start pouring. And a quarter inch to about a half inch is about all you need. And then I'm just gonna outline this. That'll give me a nice guideline to start to just remove clay out of here. And I'll start digging this out, check fit, and keep digging it out until I have this thing embedded halfway down the body thickness. Gotta okay, take off plenty off the bottom here. They don't call this thing a fat belly for nothing. All right, we got a little bit more to go, but we'll get there. And when you have it embedded enough, you'll know because half of your little eyes will be under the clay or in the clay. Now I'm using these uh, screwing eyes. They're kind of a thick wire eye. And I'm doing that not because that's what I'm gonna end up using in my casting. I'm gonna actually use a wire harness like this. It's kind of a thin wire wire harness and I'll attach the weights on the inside. But the reason I'm using these thicker screw eyes is because I wanna make a nice heavy indentation in this thing. So the final mold will have those big indentations and I'll be able to drop my harness in there and have it hold in place. So the next step is to simply get the clay nice and hard against the edge of your lure body so it creates a nice clean seam line when you do the mold. And this is pretty straightforward stuff. You add a little clay where you need to, cut a little clay where you don't need it, but it's more patience and uh, kind of an eye for detail. All right, I've got this pretty good. And notice I have the center of the eyes 
filled in with clay. That's important. That gives you a nice socket when the mold is made. The next thing I want to do is make sure I don't have any clay on the body. I'm going to wipe it down a little bit and then we'll move on to the next step. Now I want to form the sprue, which is basically the opening where you pour the resin into. And I'm just using a little piece of wedge shaped clay. I'm going to stick it right where I want that opening to be, which is going to be right at the top of the door. And this is just half the sprue. I'll form the other half of the sprue when we pour the other half of the, of the mold. And now I'm just going to take the back of a pencil. Anything blunt will do. And I'm going to make indentations that create uh, alignment keys. And I go down about, about a quarter of an inch. And I like a few close to the body and some out near the corners. And now using some solder, I'm going to form some vents. I'm going to put one here one here and one here. All right, now I'm gonna build up the sides and we'll be ready to pour the first half of the mold. And as you build up the sides, all you really need is about a quarter inch thickness or gap between the top of the lure and the top of your box. This way it'll give you plenty of thickness in the silicone, but won't waste a bunch of material. So before we pour the silicone, we need to know how much to pour so we don't waste a bunch. And typically I'll do a calculation, I'll do some measurements and I'll calculate the volume and then I'll have some factor of safety. But there's a real simple technique to use and that's the rice technique. And let me show you how you do it. Here's a little pro tip before you do this. Stick the clay into the refrigerator for about an hour. And what that does is it makes it nice and hard and gets rid of a lot of that stickiness. And then you just take regular rice. Uh, I like using short grain stuff because it gets into all the little uh, nooks and crannies. And then we'll just pour it in here nice and slowly. And you get it in there till you're sure you've got plenty in there and you're covering it all. I'm gonna pour it back out into a bowl, then take a little bristle brush and get them all out of there. And then you take the stuff coming from the mold and pour it into a measuring cup. Try not to lose any of it. And this is a 100 milliliter measuring cup and it's pretty much full. And so we'll add 50 milliliters of part A, 50 milliliters of part B and mix it up, we'll be ready to pour. Try not to mix it too vigorously because you don't want to add a bunch of bubbles. But you don't really, really need to um, degas this stuff. As long as there are no bubbles up against the lure body itself, you're good to go. Remember to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom. And every now and then, scrape the stick off. That helps ensure that you, everything's mixed up and you won't have any pocket of silicone that won't set. If you're looking for a source for some of these things, I try to find really good deals on Amazon and get good links, and I put them in my Amazon store. So look for a link to that in the description. All right, you wanna have your mold uh, as level as you can get it. And the next step is to just drizzle a little bit on the body. You wanna put a very thin layer on the body. This way you can be sure that there's no trapped air bubbles right on the surface of the body. Make sure you fill in any carved details. Then you give it a couple of minutes to make sure any bubbles uh, will come to the surface and pop. And in the meantime, I like to fill in my little divots just to make sure they're complete when they cast. Now I'm gonna fill the rest by just pouring it into one corner in a thin stream and letting it flow all the way through. And there you go, zero waste. All right, the silicone is set up. It actually set up in about six hours, but I left it overnight. And I left it in the refrigerator because I wanted the clay to be good and hard so I can scoop it up and hopefully it won't be sticky. There you go. You usually don't want this to happen. You want to keep the, the master 
in the silicone. But this silicone has been a little weird for me the whole time. It tends to weep, sort of uh, a, an oily uh, residue. And all I need to do is wipe it down and put the lure back where it's supposed to be. And now all I need to do is get Vaseline on all these surfaces. I don't have to worry about the surface of the lure, just anywhere where silicone will touch unset silicone, because they'll just bond. And I'm just using petroleum jelly. You can use a mold release agent that uh, you can just buy. Try not to get too much on the body of the lure, because you will see little brush strokes in the resin afterwards. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is build up the walls and level it again on my countertop. And we should be able to measure out the exact same amount of silicone and we'll pour it. Pull this thing apart. All right, there you can see the sprue, the top of the sprue, and our uh, vents, just the very tips of them. Let's see what happens when we open this thing up. Well, it's opening. That's a good sign anyway. Nice. That's pretty cool. We've got a nice, smooth and shiny surface. And all we've got to do now is form a wire harness and we can pour our first of many of these jerk baits. You should think about what it is you're going to put inside your lure. So if you're going to have weights or a rattle, you need to make sure that your harness will support all that. So you can mount it on the harness. It makes it a lot easier. So what I usually like to do is run back almost horizontal to the first bend down to the belly eye. I like to keep an offset here and then take this back to the tail hook eye. This way I have room to put weights up near the head and then this offset allows me to put a rattle chamber in here. And for most shapes of lures, that kind of shape of a wire harness works really well. So what I've done is drawn a level line and a plumb line perpendicular to it. And I'm gonna put this little magnetic peg right where they cross. And I've taken the lure and stuck a piece of tape on there and put a bunch of little holes, more or less where I think the center of mass should be. I'm hanging the hooks on it. I'm gonna poke through and try different locations and see where I need to put the majority of the weight to get the lure to be just slightly tailed down because that's what I want. And that looks about right to me. So I'll take it and mark where that vertical line crosses through. And that little mark will serve as a reference for where the center of the mass that I put in there is. So I might separate it out where I have a big mass forward and a big mass back, but the center would be right about where that line is. Now I've already calculated what the volume of this lure is, and I've done that in a lot of lures in the past. And let me know if you guys would like to see a lure builder pro tip video just specifically on weight and balance, solving for the density of the wood, solving for the volume of the lure, and then solving solving for how much weight you want to put in it. All right, since I've already solved for the volume of this lure, it's 35.3 cubic centimeters. That means that for this lure to be perfectly neutral, it would have to weigh 35.3 grams. But I don't want it to be neutral. I want it to sink. So I'm gonna add 10% to that, and that gets me to right about 39. It's 38.8 exactly, but we're gonna shoot for 39 grams. So now I need to know how much the lure is gonna weigh after I cast it out of the resin. And what you have, the way that you do that is you take the volume that you've already calculated 35.3 and you multiply that times the density of the material you're going to use so I'm going to use the 8% mix and the density of that is 0.731 and that gives me right at 26 grams so this lure should weigh 26 grams when I pour it so now getting the weight of the hooks 
and the internal wire, which is just under three grams. I'll add that to the estimated weight of the lure after I cast it. And I get 28.8, which is right at 10 grams less than my target weight of 39 grams. So I need to add 10 grams of weight. Those three split shot give me 10.8. I can live with that. Let's start with that. This first one is always a little experimental, but I don't want it to float. I want to be sure that it's going to sink. This stuff is set up. All right, let's open her up. Looking good. So it should be 39 with both hooks. So how's that for accuracy? It's like an engineer was doing this or something. All right, almost forgot. Let's go ahead and do a tank test. See how it does. Not too bad. I think next time I'll put the weight just slightly forward. That's pretty doggone close to what I was wanting. So to be honest, it doesn't always work out this perfectly. A lot of times the mold itself will change the volume of the lure and usually it'll make it slightly smaller, a little less volume. And that's usually because you kind of compress it with whatever you're holding it with. So All right, we're down on the dock and let's give it a shot. That's looking pretty good. It sinks just a little bit tail heavy. It's kind of what I wanted. Let's see if I can walk the dog with it. Oh yeah. Looks like it'll have a nice erratic twitch. <laughs> really erratic, even when I give it a steady sweep of the rod. Super erratic. Let's give it a cast. It gets out there. All right, I'm pretty happy with it. If you make your own and you're coming up with your own formulation, just remember the less dense you make it, the more stability you can build into your lure. And if you want to know more about mixing resins just right, you need to watch this video next. All right, everyone, I'll see you guys next Friday.